And I said, you know, I need to find dudes that want to play with me. Hey, technical difficulties. <laughs> Good, I just said play I, with I, you. I love it. So hard. Let's retake that. <laughs> Alex's life. Hey, let's dissect everything we possibly can and turn it into innuendo. <laughs> Alright, ready to rock. All right, so we here we are on the couch, live at Lou's. We've got Monacan Hill, Richmond, Virginia. Uh, we're gonna find out a little bit about these guys and see what see what's good. So tell us, uh, where'd the start come? Uh, well, I was you know 14 or so when I picked up guitar, and uh, it was part of the venting process, trying to deal with my parents separating and everything like that. Uh, I just channeled all my energy into playing guitar, and uh, by the time I was about 16, I started writing songs and singing and you know and by the time I guess I was 16 17 years old I just decided it was time to put a band together and make these songs happen and, uh, they were getting a little bit more epic as they went along and um, you know for lack of a better word <laughs> but uh, you know it ended up being something I wanted to do and pursue and um, Monacan Hill was I got the name from my neighborhood. <laughs> Just needed something. So you went to Monacan High School? Oh, yeah, I went to Monacan High School, and it was Monacan Hills was the uh, neighborhood. Okay. So, um, you know, it was just part of growing up and uh, trying to make a decent living out of music. Yeah, and, and where does this bearded man fit in the picture? Well, he just came along. <laughs> I just came along. <laughs> I just came along. <laughs> well, you, you know, well, we, we were, um, you know, we needed a bass player who was really dedicated to playing music and who was really... Uh, into pushing the band forward and expanding because I, I was very uh, I guess I was ignorant to the idea I didn't really know what to do um, and you know we picked uh, Jake up along and uh, everything started taking off since we we've had him so uh, now Jake I, I hear you've actually been to school yeah um, I'm at the jazz program at VCU right now um, I went 2011-2012 went on hiatus to save some money and uh, I go back to school on Thursday it's going to be my first day of class. Back when, uh, when you plan on graduating? Uh, it looks like 2017, 2018. Depends With a major on in? Jazz performance. Very nice, very nice. Jazz performance. So that, that's really good stuff. Um, I guess moving on is, uh, you know, how many how many versions of this band have existed throughout the creation? I mean, usually all bands go through a growth process. We have definitely gone through a growth process. Uh, it's been nothing but... It's been nothing but increasing. It's been on an incline more than a decline, thank God. <laughs> it's um, it's definitely been a growing process. Um, I didn't think it would last this long, um, but the more serious, uh, more seriously we've been playing, I guess we've been playing, you know, together. Um, the higher we seem to go, you know, and I I can't think of a better way to explain it. <laughs> it's just been a, uh, it's just been going up. <laughs> that's that's good. Always yeah. good news. Now, venues. Big shows. Oh. I know. I've heard y'all do some good things. I uh, play with some big bands. It's been, it's been pretty fun, man. Been really fun. Uh, um, so I think the biggest act that we've worked with was the Venetia Fair. The um, our friend, my friend Colin of Red States, uh, had a gig that night in this band, Venetia Fair. If you're not yes, familiar with them. Yes, plug. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then um, you yeah. know, they're looking for a gig in Richmond. And, and then we were going to play at Southern Blues, but then they got condoned, so we ended up playing together at a house condemned. show. That's a good word. I like that. <laughs> yeah, they shut down. <laughs> condemned. Condemned. Condem Whatever. Whatever. <laughs> Anyways, they shut down. They, fucked up. They, they screwed us over. Anyways, um, so that, we played with those guys. Turf War, we played with those guys. <clears throat> um, American Royalty, they're like a... Uh, they're like a what, you, what would you call it? Like a okay. power pop band? They're, yeah, they're more power pop, I guess. Yeah. I mean, just all around good fashion rock and roll. But yeah, we know. played with those guys as Strange Matter. And uh, there are other great local bands that we've played with. Yellow Tie Guy up in Maryland. Mm -hmm. uh, we played with Red States. We're probably several about, times. Yeah, we've played with those guys several times. Um, Bandoras. They're starting to get really familiar downtown. It's Clifton and Will. Very nice. They do nice. really good. And we, we've just been playing with a lot of guys. There's a lot of bands that we've been playing with, and they all sound great. I don't think we've played with a crappy band yet. Oh, no, no, no. And one thing I will say is if it weren't for this guy, we wouldn't be playing with <laughs> those big bands. I mean, yeah. he is definitely, you know, I'm I'm, uh, I'm not kissing up. <laughs> I mean it. You know, it's it's like yeah, really... Yeah, freaky on the couch. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's That's been, why I'm all the way over here. It's been really man. a great yeah, process. Yeah, yeah, keep some space there. <laughs> Your foot's um, too close. Upcoming shows. What do, you, what do you guys got lined up for the future? What, do you, what are your plans? Yo, uh. we're playing Thursday at Amelia's. We're playing with the Blue Lotus Collective, which is Will and Clifton, who play with the Bandoras. They also have their own promoting collective where they get a bunch of Richmond bands together. And we're headlining for their bi-weekly event 
at Emilio's. They've been doing that since November, and it's just grown. The last time we played with those guys, there's about 70 people. I talked to him about it. He's like, oh, there's usually more. I was like, you just filled up Emilio's, and there's usually more people in there? <laughs> um, but we're also playing the Slip and Slide Rehab Festival down in Farmville. Um, I haven't seen the complete bill, but we're playing with a couple other rock bands and then a couple of dubstep acts. Then uh, the very next weekend, we're playing with Relative to Perception, and we're playing with Red States. And uh, after we pray, we're playing with those guys in McCormick's. And then we're playing at a, um, at a charity event down at Amelia Courthouse. So it's going to be one Saturday in September, another Saturday in September, and then the Saturday after that. And then in October, we are playing Wonderland on the 18th of October, and we're playing at the Camel on the 6th. So we're really excited for those shows. Just keep rolling. Yeah, right it sounds, now, it sounds yeah. like a good schedule. Exactly. <laughs> right now, we're now, I noticed we do have two on the couch, though. Right. Right, right. I don't know too many two-man bands. So <laughs> what, what, are the, what are the plans to keep this growing? Well, this week, we have about six or seven drummers. Literally, we're going to be jamming. One of us or both of us are going to be jamming with drummers every day. Um, and we, we've had really good drummers get in touch with us. We've listened to them online. We've seen them perform before in bands. And uh, we're just waiting to see who gets the best feel with us and who we get the best feel with and make Take the right go decision. Go to the next level. Some, exactly. Yeah, just gotta, we just got to all mesh together. That's part of our thing, you know, especially... You know, back then I didn't really care too much, you know. It was sort of like just whoever was down to you know, jam and everything like that, I would jam with them as friends in high school and stuff like that. You know, I mean, as the situation, like, is, we are expanding and trying to get our name out, you know, and we need to have, uh, you know, we're just looking for somebody that actually has the uh, potential to work with us and actually can go somewhere with us. Richmond so. is an art town, an art city. There's a lot yes. of art thriving in it, so there <clears> is a <throat> lot of artists, including the drummers, and uh, we feel like the candidates that we've been in touch with um, one of them will give us the fullest potential for the whole band for the long run. Now, any any plans to add any any members beyond a third? We've, we've talked about we've it. We've thought about it definitely. Um, we need to add a third first. <laughs> <laughs> there, yeah, that's a great. That's the best way to describe it. Once we get that third person and you know work together for a while, we'll probably have a better F, uh, answer for that. But uh, you know, it's it's something I've always been open to. You know, I really would love to have a four piece. You know, and have a lead guitar somewhere. Even though some people say the songs don't necessarily need that, you know, I mean, one day we, we're going to get to that potential, and I think, where we're going to have bigger stuff and just more all-around rock melodies, and, you know, a lead guitarist would definitely add another dimension. Definitely sounds good. <clears throat> um, your sound, you know, uh, have y'all been progressively changing uh, your sound, um, you know, sticking to the punk roots, but yet, you know, reaching out and grabbing from other genres? I was uh, influenced by the Ramones and, you know, the Clash and the Sex Pistols and Green Day and, you know, um, even classic rock bands like the Stones and, you know, the Who and all that. Um, you know, and it's bands like that I've always tried to resemble a little bit, you know, by doing it in my own style. And um, when I write songs, I just, you know, kind of take inspiration from that. Um, and having said that, since we've started the band, or, you know, whatever, it was like... Those songs were just very simplistic, three chord songs, stuff like that. And um, then we get to a song like now, where we are with, you know, a song like Electric Playground or Broken Heart Blues, and, you know, and those songs really, you know, the key changes and all that stuff, and the songs just develop. They go into like an all around melody, and oh, yeah. it really adds another dimension. Yeah, and I hear <laughs> you guys are uh, recording a demo. We uh, are. I can't wait for that to get finished so we can get that out to people and, and see, you know, what you guys are really made of. Exactly. You know, exactly. Give, give, give Richmond a taste of some. Some good young punk. It's exactly. great. It's great. You know, they've had a bunch of demos around since before I joined the band, and um, you know, you know, you can tell some, you can tell that the band sounds great. Um, the recordings weren't really mixed and mastered properly, if at all, and so it's good to be working uh, with our to P Productions and to finally get a good mix master sound for Richmond and the rest of the world. We want everybody to hear us. Well, if you're gonna put your foot out, may as well be your best foot, right? Exactly, exactly man. Exactly. All right. Um. Really, you know, your your influences speak a lot for your sound. You know, it's a it's a, a good sound. Been compared to uh, some surfer punk. Got got a lot of different vibes, and uh, I I believe there's a quote floating out there, um, and you could probably best describe it more than I could. That has been uh, written about your band sound. Um, something 
in an alleyway, Grateful Dead. <laughs> oh yeah, Chris Bops, <laughs> who is the original guitar player for Guar. He um, he's a freelance writer for Richmond Times and Star Weekly and other, you know, Richmond Press. And uh, the last gig we had, which was also at Amelia's, we um, he wrote a little article about us with our picture beside us. And uh, I can't remember the whole thing, but the one quote that we definitely remember is a nice mix between the mummies and the stones that met up in an alleyway that got beat up by somebody. But what really, <laughs> what really impressed me was uh, he said that our sound is a bridge too sensitive to gap. So I took that as a huge compliment. Basically, Absolutely. you can't compare us to anybody. And at the end of the day, that's what everybody wants. Everybody wants to sound good and original and I feel like Alex's songs along with my arranging and my bass parts and the drum parts that have been written for the band I feel like it's all original but it's not too original and you know that it's very proud that other people can recognize it too that's good that's good um fans I know y'all got tons of them out there um are they saying good things are they keeping you guys pumped up and ready to play the next time the and, fans and keep us motivated to do what we love to do exactly. you know, that's the uh, bottom line that's what they're there for they're there to support us and that's their choice you know and they chose to do it and I I I don't take any of them for granted I think they're the best thing that keep us going um, and if I didn't if I didn't have any fans at this point then I would not even play anymore right so, you know I mean I, I just that's what I'm saying it's well, at least like, you're doing it for the people exactly that's what it is it's to me it's the ultimate customer service exactly so you know people um there are different artists out there there's some artists who don't care about what the people who come to their shows think but there's a reality of the situation and psychological psychological side of the situation where you can't just put your best foot forward and your best sound out there for yourself to please you other you know when you're able to please other people that will motivate you beyond words yeah. and, and it is a business so your customers are, are what you depend on customers being the fans exactly. that, that's who you please absolutely so uh, <laughs> tell us a little bit about your gear and you know what you guys take with you on a normal basis and, and how you guys rock out well, um, this is uh, the Gibson Les Paul studio. It's primarily what I'm playing. I've uh, been playing it since I was a freshman in high school, and I uh, bought it from a friend. And um, it's been uh, it's been doing me justice. Uh, you know, I call it Jinx. That's its name. That's cute. <laughs> no, but, uh, it's it's um, you know it's been my. Uh, to go to. Yeah, I mean, I, I play a little bit of... I try to switch it up a little bit, too, at shows and stuff like that. I, You know, I, I still play my 1970 Fender Bronco. You know, it's cool to bring vintage back into modern rock now, music. Now, is guitar the only instrument you play? <laughs> Pretty much. I mean, in this band. You know, I mean, I, I have a I mean, little... I mean, I hear you've dabbled in the violin a, a little bit. <laughs> um, yeah, I tried to. That was a middle school thing. I kind of tried to go with it a little bit. I, it didn't really go anywhere. I picked up a little bit of bass, not too much, and I'm not nearly as talented as most people. Uh -uh. And um, <laughs> and you know, but I mean, I I'm not a drummer, I'm not a bass player, I'm I'm just a guitar player, and I'm not even a singer. <laughs> but I, You're a singer. There's but no it, yeah, it, 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 it sounds good. It, it sounds does sound good. Cool, Jake, cool. What, what are you what are you playing with over there, man? I'm rocking the uh, Fender Jazz. I don't really know the year. I don't really care. Um, <laughs> I bought it in seventh grade. So if I do the math, I don't know. It was like seven years ago, something like that. And uh, rocking the uh, Roto sound flat wounds 105 gauge so pretty pretty heavy set um and ladies and gentlemen kurt cobain on the bass guitar <laughs> <laughs> but yeah it's over here i need to uh i need to replace the pickups i need to get some pjs on there but other than that you know it's been solid it's been a good as far, sound as, far as amps cabs what do you what do you what do you guys generally play through you know you don't want to give your trade secrets away but you know some people like to know how you get your sound <laughs> oh man i go to the uh go to amp peg bass amp you know it's good for practice it's good for the studio and it's good for live sets you know I, I probably need to upgrade to something bigger when we play for bigger festivals and stuff like that but for right now as far as bar gigs and venue gigs and stuff like that it's been treating me really well i've had that thing since 10th grade so a few more years than i've had this sucker and uh, i got it for marching band i played bass and marching band and uh, i used to march around i had the wireless thing going on and uh, Heather Manuel, she was the drum major. She's a really awesome person, but she knocked over my amp way too many times. And I'm not talking about on the ground, or whatever. Like she'd be on the podium, which is like what, four feet, five feet in the air, and she'd kick it over a couple of times, and it still rocks, dude. It still fucking rocks. <laughs> I've been rocking a uh, 
a PV <laughs> amp. I don't really, yeah, I, I'm kind of the same. I don't really care about the year or the condition. <laughs> I just, you know, I mean, I... Oh, well, well, you care about the condition. As long as, long as, as you get a good, you know, a good, as long as you get a sound that you're happy with, that's yeah, all that matters. That's and the same thing. You can tell this guitar has been beat up so I mean, many times. That is, that is very, very battle worn. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, I took the pick guard off that thing. I still rock it. You know, same with the amp. You know, the amp's been a little beat up. I've had that almost as long as that. And, you know, it's uh, I'm still playing the PV. And like you said, you know, I, I kind of. I feel like when we start doing bigger things and playing bigger places, you know, um, when that day comes, I'm going to want to upgrade. You know, I've been really interested in what Marshall's got, you know, in the Ant lineup. I'm yep. a big Marshall yeah, fan. They've got so. some good stuff going out. Absolutely. Um, any, any previous bands that, that you guys have been involved with that, uh, you know, people may know, people have heard of, seen? I was in a um, metal band in high school. <laughs> oh, yeah, who wasn't at this point? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, everybody was. Mine, mine lasted about three weeks, <laughs> you know. And then I said it's time to do some more of my own stuff, because <laughs> I, you know, I'm not, I'm not too much of a metalhead. I, I like a little bit of metal, you know. I mean, but when I, you know. After I played the same chord over and over again, for me, I mean, it wasn't... <laughs> I mean, what else did you say? No, no, I mean, metal music can be very, very... What we were doing was not. <laughs> and, you know, it was more of the same thing over and over. And I was like, you know, I need something a little bit more varied and structured. And so I, you know, but that was my band. I was in a hard rock kind of metalish band again after that when I was like a senior in high school and when I turned 18. So that was... um. That was a big thing, you know, for me at the time. That was when I first started playing shows, and after that, it, you know, then you know, Monica and Hill took over. <laughs> that is, uh, yeah, sounds, it, it sounds like you guys have really got it going on, and you know, the, I, I really hope you guys get out there and do do good things and make make that dream happen. That's what it's all about, is you know, rocking faces and melting places. That's what it is. Exactly. So, um, well, this has been Monica and Hill, Alex, Jake. I'm Chad. And we'll see you next time. Awesome. Goodbye. Bye, guys. <laughs> hey, you guys. Bye, buddy. <laughs> Toby, find Where your dad. Where the fuck are we? <laughs> <laughs> All wrong. Finish.